Okay, so now what is this, Act 4? Okay. The Act 4, there's some bands. Again, they're using the primary colors from our accents uh, that we set up in our palette. And in this case, they're coming in from the left, going towards the right. So that's that. And there's a ease out animation, so they're slowing down. After that, you have some footage. Okay. And the, it's not an image, it's actually a video footage. So you can see Jeremy is talking about reviewing a keyboard. And there's resize. And then, of course, there's the movement. And then out of that, uh, it's coming here. And then it's also going to the next uh, stack of nodes. And in the next stack of notes, so there's some uh, funky business going on here. Let me show you. And like I was explaining earlier, this is where the note system comes in handy because you can reuse your um, assets to do multiple things. You can have this footage playing and then this footage can also act, act as a, a mask for something else. And in this case, as you can see, the same footage is also sliding across in sort of black and white. Okay. So that one is right here. There's a color corrector. And of course, you have to mask it. Otherwise, everything will get desaturated. And then the mask that moved across is also masking this keyboard text that slides across. And it's all happening very, very quickly. Of course, we're we're dissecting this in slow motion, but when you see the intro, it all goes by so fast. Okay, and moving on to the next node. So you have this sort of peach bar that comes in from the left, and the reason why it's uh, it's just sort of taking a small area instead of the whole is because now it's leaving the presenter in the frame, so you can still see Jeremy's face. Let me move this render range up a little bit. Okay. And then in this bar, in this band, in this sidebar or whatever, you're going to have these texts come in. And there is something very interesting that's about to happen that I'm going to show you that you may not have noticed when you saw the intro. See this uh, sort of darker text that's moving across you can read it right now because i'm i want the viewer to read this so when it goes across and enters into the footage there's another text right here as you can see and that's masking that so you can play that text in a different color so you see that little text will change its color to a different color and that's the mask that's controlling it right and let's move up the render range a little more in terms of typography, the logo, the one that says Jeremy C, is the serif font that we use, the Playfair, which is very classy and sort of traditional. And all the text in the intro uh, is all the sans serif, the Montserrat text font. It's kind of my style. I, I've been using that a lot. And then you also have this sort of Babus New neutral text in there. Okay, so in this slide, in this act, we're establishing a couple of things that we're trying to express here. One, we have this shot of Jeremy talking about presenting keyboard review. And two, uh, we have this text on the side that's talking about keyboard reviews, synths, arrangers, MIDI controllers, pianos, whatnot. So we're established, we established a hint in act one. And then we elaborated on it in Act 2. And then in Act 3, we're sort of, it's like a, like a present, right? So you're opening up the wrapper, and now you're opening up the box itself. And now you kind of have an idea, okay, it's a, a wireless headset or whatever, right? And now you're opening the box itself, so you know what it is. But there are still steps to take before you can reach the, the present itself. Okay. and then. Right here, you have uh, the slashes and the. So you have the slashes up here this time, and you have the squares and the crosses uh, on the bottom right here. And this is repeating the same way 
that it did in the previous uh, slides. But there are some minor uh, changes the way we're merging them and the way we're rotating them. Sometimes they're uh, moving uh, together. Sometimes they're actually moving separately. Sometimes we're adding a little swing. Sometimes they're moving with different animation curves, basically. So it's kind of hard to notice when you're looking at the intro itself. But if you see my, um, my note flow, uh, you can see that you know, they're set up differently every time. So it's not just a matter of copying and pasting. And the level of detail and the level of um, sort of a variation from slide to slide is basically what gives the whole uh, animation that, that final polish that you're looking for uh, when you hire somebody to do an intro animation for you. Okay, so that, that is what act number three looks like. And then I'm going to move on to the next one, the last one. Okay, so this is act four, the last one. Uh, you have these uh, same bands that are moving down. So again, same concept of the bands. We're reusing the same um, uh, graphical motif, uh, so to speak. But every time the accents are different colors and there are different animation curves and they come from different directions. Okay. And after that is our main uh, blue color. It has a vignette on it. And then it has some blur and grain because... Uh, we're trying to avoid banding, and I'll cover that in a separate tutorial. But if I were to just uh, take these uh, blur and grains out and zoom in, can you see the banding right here? I don't know uh, how much uh, YouTube is going to compress this tutorial, this video, but on my screen, I can see the banding here. So I'm going to show you separately how to take care of that. All right. Okay, so now we're closing in on the resolution. So for the resolution, again, we're going to use the dark blue in the background and the peach in the foreground. And that's what that looks like. Now we're going to bring in our logo. And there we go. Let's uh, look at this beautiful typeface. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's turn off the nodes. So as you can see, it has this uh, serif look, very, very classy, very high end. Okay. And then uh, let's see, for the text, we have some animation going on here. There is, I believe, yeah, opacity. So it's it's fading in, I guess. And then for the movement, I don't know if you can see it, but let me rewind it here. You'll see that it has this sort of um, um, kerning animation going on, as well as the the last word keeps moving to the left. And then and this is going to eventually become the logo itself. So now we have. A nice little logo so this is going to be used by the client in whatever they want to do and then we also have an additional uh, slogan line and this is light gray it's using a um, a sans serif typeface to sort of um, contrast the logo font okay so it fades in and it moves to the right. This one moves to the left. And then the piano drops down. And as you can see, this animation is happening very, very slowly uh, because we want the viewer to be able to read everything. And then we got the slogan line here. So this is establishing what this channel is all about. And of course, visually, we're establishing that with the piano as well. And then we have the output, and it, and that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, this is how I make this. I hope you guys uh, learned something new and uh, pick some new information out of here. Let's go ahead and quickly look at the animation in its whole one more time.
Whew. That was a lot to take in. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you guys found this entertaining. You picked up some new tips and tricks. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Happy compositing, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.